12-year-old startup data miner announcing a new $475 million funding round this morning, taking its valuation to over $4 billion. The company pulls data from public data sources like social media and sensors to provide its customers like Shell, Netflix, Citibank, and New York City AI-driven real-time insights. With us now is data miner CEO Ted Bailey. Ted, good morning and thanks for being with us. Thank you so much for having me. What interested me at first was sort of the mix of investors in this round, and they were fairly diverse. One of them was Eldridge, a firm that owns the L.A. Dodgers and makes sports investments. So I wonder, is this where you see sort of future opportunity? What are those? Does that potentially extend to the sports betting space? Well, data miners' customers really are in two main buckets, large global multinational corporations and public sector first responders. Large global enterprises in dozens of different sectors, including sports, for example, half of the Fortune 50 rely on data miner signals every day. And that ranges from AIG, a large insurance company, to Goldman Sachs, a, a large investment bank, to, as you mentioned, a big global corporation like, like Shell. When an unexpected event happens in the world, we're able to warn our customers with the earliest signals on breaking events and critical emerging information. Mm -hmm. Um, another investor this round, reInvent Capital, that's Mark Pincus and Reid Hoffman's firm that has done Indeed. three SPACs so far. Now, is, is that <laughs> something that they offered a SPAC instead of a Series F round? Well, as you can imagine, in this type of environment, Deirdre, um, all entrepreneurs have to take very seriously the hot nature of the public markets. But for us, we decided to pursue this growth capital round. Uh, for three main reasons, to accelerate the growth of our corporate business line, which doubled in revenue growth now three years in a row, to internationalize, to extend our footprint out across Europe and APAC, and to expand our AI platform. SPACing and many other uh, options are, are all definitely on the table for companies like ours, but we really think public market investors are really waking up to just how promising AI and big data companies are. So we're really excited about an IPO. And to be clear, an IPO <laughs> is on the horizon for us. We're targeting 2023. Um, this capital round okay. is very much what? a pre-IPO round. <laughs> You just talked about how hot the markets were, and you say that investors are just waking up. I mean, all evidence, evidence shows, um, you look at Snowflake, you look at C3.ai, that they are fully awake. Why not take advantage of this moment? Why push an IPO out all the way to 2023 when you just said it, the markets are so hot and receptive to you know, software and AI companies right now? Yeah, I mean, look, um, AI and big data companies like the one you mentioned, C3AI, great example, Palantir. These are companies that have really unique fundamental qualities, exceptional gross margin profiles, uh, great long-term profitability potential. For us, in our trajectory, investing in the areas I mentioned over the next couple of years is going to put us in the best position for an IPO. I'm long-sighted. We're building a company for decades to come. Just rushing to a hot market is not our goal. Our goal is an iconic global company. And for us, 2023 just makes the most sense. Uh, it, it's an interesting point that you make, and I wonder how you differentiate, or I, I guess I would say help uh, others, investors, potential investors, differentiate between you guys, C3 and Palantir. W why don't you run into each other, and why isn't this a zero-sum game? Yeah, so stepping back, um, data miners' mission is to integrate all available public data signals to create the world's first real-time information and event discovery platform for businesses and public sector organizations. So in a nutshell, what does that mean? 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, we're discovering events uh, by detecting information in public data. A company like Palantir takes external data. A company like C3AI is an AI solution that's brought internal to a company. 
data miner detects trends and information in external data. We discover signals outside of the scope of a corporation or public sector enterprise and bring those organizations that signal. So in that way, we are just differentiated in the AI space um, in spite of all of those companies having very sophisticated AI platforms. And so then strategically, what are the most important platform relationships that you're going to need to form uh, to, to see that your vision of what's important in big data plays out? Is it the mega scale cloud providers? Is it the, the data platforms that are interfacing with those, you know, the likes of Snowflake? Uh, what are the most important relationships? Well, those are great questions. I think, you know, for us, we now integrate over 100,000 different public data sources, and those are very diverse. So they range from broad global social media platforms to regional social media platforms, to media, to the deep and dark web, to IoT sensors. For us, partnerships can play an important role, and we do have some deep partnerships with critical platforms like Reddit, you just mentioned, and Twitter. But for us, keeping up with the information landscape, in other words, staying out ahead, is what's most critical. When I started the company, believe it or not, 95% of the data sources we integrate today didn't even exist. So as I look out ahead to 2023, I think most of the data we'll use then doesn't even exist yet. So for me, it's always about being right. one step ahead and partnering for the future. At the, at the same time, Ted, uh, you run into more privacy controls, but that conversation will have to wait for another time. Uh, we're, we're out of it, but thank you so much for being with us, Ted Bailey, uh, Data Miner, CEO.